All right, here we go. Chris Carroll, happy to have you on the platform, my man. Thank you. Good to be here. Oh, uh, man, it's a pleasure, my man. I've been trying to get you on the platform for a while now, man. But for the people that don't know you, right, introduce yourself to the people. So I'm Chris Carroll. I'm a retired uh, lieutenant from Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. Uh, I was working uh, the night Tupac was shot. I was a sergeant on the, the strip, and I was the first one uh, there at the scene, and I held Tupac as he spoke his last words. Yes, indeed. So you being a cop, you being a retired cop, Keefe D, they raided his house in connection to Tupac murder. What do you think about this situation? Well, you know, it's kind of a, first of all, it surprised me a lot. So I, uh, you know, I, the, the warrant was served on a Monday evening. So I got a call Tuesday morning. Somebody calls me up and, uh, they go, hey, man, is that warrant being served on your house? They think it's been served at my house. I'm like, what do you, I go, what do you, you talk? I have no idea what you're talking about. And they go, there's a warrant served on the Tupac case. I'm like, no, that's some internet BS. There's no warrant. So then I got a second call and then a third. And I'm like, all right, what's the deal? So then I, you know, got on the, got on the computer, started checking it out. And, uh, here, here, here's what, what happened, uh, basically is, and, and you probably, uh, have seen some of this. This guy, Keefe D, has been shooting his mouth off for a couple of years now, openly telling everybody that he's part of the murder. He says he handed Orlando Anderson the gun, and Orlando Anderson took, you know, is the shooter, and shot Tupac. He openly is saying, I handed him the gun. Well, that makes him harder, part of this murder. So he's been going on. I, I couldn't believe it when, he, when I first saw him on, you know, on a, I think it was probably a YouTube uh, channel or something, but he's just been going around telling the world that he's part of this murder. And, uh, you know, a lot of people, you know, were coming to me and a lot of people in the press uh, are like, hey, why, why aren't they doing something with this guy? And, you know, my response, well, of course, is, well, I, I'm retired now. It's not my my call uh, to do something with it. But uh, if this guy has run his mouth and run his mouth and run his mouth, and it's it comes to the time where, you know, the police department, the DA's office, the, the public in general is like, look, we, we got to do something with this guy. How long are we going to sit back? And listen to a guy tell us that he's openly admitting being part of a, an unsolved murder. He's saying, I'm the guy. You know, how long is the world supposed to sit back and do absolutely nothing? So I think he's he's now he's forced himself into a situation. I mean, obviously, a uh, search warrant is not an arrest warrant. He's not under arrest yet. Um, but that's where if you're going to get the ball rolling on this thing, that's where things would start would be with the search warrant. So, you know, all of these things he's, he's said on TV, you know, that's that all that's admissible in court. You know, if you're going to go out there just on your own and shoot your mouth off, then you've put yourself out there and that's, that's what he's done. So now, now the ball is rolling to take it uh, to the next step. Uh, I think to, to, for the police to find evidence in his house uh, of a crime at this point is slim to be honest with you. I would love it if they found something. Um, are they going to find something 27 years later? You know, uh, you look at the search warrant, the return on the search warrant, which lists everything that they found. And, uh, you know, they're going after, uh, obviously, computers, cell phones, uh, writing. Uh, two, the, you know, the two main pieces of evidence in this case that were never found are the weapon itself, the gun was never found, and the vehicle. Now, I don't think anybody expected there to be a vehicle there, but what, what they might find is maybe something that links him to the vehicle, a, an old registration, receipts, uh, rental car information. You know, it's possible, but at 27 years later, it's pretty tough uh, to find something like that. But, but you got to at, at least try. You got to give, give it a shot. Got to give it a shot, man. But the thing that caught me by surprise with Keefe D, I had no idea that he was living in Vegas, the same place where he committed the crime. And there's no statute of limitation in Vegas. So that was surprising to me. Well, you know, I, I, I'm amazed myself. Matter of fact, uh, his house is very, very close to where I'm sitting here doing this interview right now. It's just down the street. Um, so, yeah. And, you know, at Vegas, uh, and this would surprise a lot of people, but Vegas is actually a pretty law and order type of town. Now, if you want to go out and find some nonsense and, uh, you know, 
sniff cocaine off a hooker's butt or whatever they you know talk about yeah you can go out and probably find that but as far as like uh violent crimes and punishment and uh people getting arrested i mean they uh, we take it pretty serious here in vegas it's 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 pretty tight uh people are surprised but uh for him to 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 be living here and just uh, rubbing everybody's nose in the fact that he took part in the murder, at least he claims he did. Um, I don't know. I don't. I'm not sure what his motivation is. You know, if he's just looking to get some airtime, or uh, I've heard rumors that he even had sold some items that he told people, you know, were there that night. Uh, you know, whether that's uh, BS or not, I don't know, but. To think is that not only is he admitting to being part of a murder, but now he's going to profit from the whole deal. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's somebody wants, you know, it's like somebody do something, please. So, I, I you know, I'm, I'm happy that, uh, you know, the police department, the, the district attorney's office, everybody's got to be on board with them uh, with this thing for it to to move forward. So I'm glad they're uh, they're giving it a try. And and we'll see what happens. I, I think it will be very difficult uh, to prosecute. And I know a lot of people who haven't been involved in the legal system and stuff will say, well, why would it be difficult? He's admitting that he, he did it. Well, first of all, he's got no credibility whatsoever. So he's not a believable guy. Um, even his own word just on itself, it still has to be backed up with some sort of evidence. Because what can happen is he can go to court and say, oh, man, I was just... I was just telling stories. I was just being run of my mouth and none of it's true. I like to tell stories and, you know, wait, where's the proof? So they've got to have a little something more than just his words. I mean, he opens the floodgates when he, he says that and it hurts him, but just on its own, it doesn't mean as much as people might think it does. What you think about the news that broke about the police saying that they found 40 caliber bullets at Keefe D house? Uh, I, I don't think it's that big a deal, really. Um, I, I think Vegas is kind of like, uh, you know, you're down in Texas. I mean, how many of us have bullets in our house? You know, damn near everybody. So, and, and 40 caliber is uh, a pretty common round. So you, what you would have to look at, you know, the one piece of evidence that we do have, probably the best physical evidence is we have the bullets that were in Tupac's body. So what they can do is see, are those bullets the same type of bullets that that we have um you know even if they are this still doesn't necessarily mean they came from that box and so forth but it, it's a start it's something to look at um but just the fact that there's bullets in in his house what are the odds of those bullets being you know the same ones that were used in a homicide 26 27 years ago i, I would say slim not impossible but uh probably not likely but hypothetically, though, hypothetically speaking, what if them bullets is connected to Tupac murder? Uh, you know, ultimately, that call is going to uh, be up to the district attorney's office and, and for them to say, do we have a case here or do we not have a case? I mean, it certainly helps if we say uh, those are the same. Those appear to be the same bullets. Now, now you got to remember, if we took the bullets that say that came out of Tupac, you can't necessarily say that they came from that box, even if they are the same manufacturer. But it, it it's one of those things, it helps. It's another piece of the puzzle. You know, it's just like if we can put all these things together, it's like, well, now we got a guy who said he did it. And now we found bullets that are the same, uh, of the same manufacturer, same time period uh, that were inside Tupac. It's like, it, it makes things stronger. Um, and all the things they took as far as computers and, uh, things like that. It's going to take a long time for them to sift through that. They're going to be going through emails and, you know, any correspondence he's had with other people about the murder and so forth. And that's, that's going to take a long time. So I, I would tell people, don't expect anything to happen for a while. Um, you know, maybe they'll surprise me and something will, will happen pretty quick, but, um, it would surprise me if it did. Yeah, it's definitely going to take a while. Do you think the police was tipped off that it was something at Kiffy D House and that's why they raided it? Uh, I don't think there's any new tips coming out. You, you know, you got to remember most everybody who is involved in this whole incident is dead at this point. So um, I think, you, you know, you run your mouth, you, you, you talk to, <laughs> you talk yourself into a search warrant. Uh, maybe, maybe you've even talked yourself into a murder charge. You know, we don't know that yet, but uh I don't think there's any like new 
tips coming forward from any anybody. I think uh, you know the only every everybody who we believe to be in that car uh, is dead except for Keefe. Uh, you know Orlando Anderson, who's who's most likely the shooter. Uh, you know, he died a year after Tupac was murdered himself. Um, and you know, that was a, a, something that came up a lot. It's like, it's like why people were always like, why have there been no arrests made? It's been a long time. Why no arrest? Well, cause the guy that did it was murdered himself. That's why no arrest. So, um, you know, this, you know, with Keefe D coming out saying that, uh, you know, he handed him the gun, you know, that puts some type of legal culpability upon him. You know, is he, do you charge him with murder? You know, is he is he big enough part of it to just flat out charge him with murder or some type of accessory or some other charge? That would be up to you know the DA to determine after they look look at what they have as far as a case. What kind of deal did they give Keefe D? I heard they gave him like a proffer agreement or something like that. Okay, Here, here's here's my understanding of it. Is he was. Uh, I don't even know if it was a deal. I just think, I, I think as as far as a deal, they went, it went something like this: Look, if you tell us everything you know, we won't charge you with the crime. And now that was like in two thousand nine. So he goes in there, and I tell you the truth, I'm not sure exactly what was said in two thousand nine, but I don't think it was uh, him confessing to the degree that he is now. But what what happens is that's just for that incident. That doesn't give you you know, the right to go out and start running your mouth for the next few years, just telling the world that you did it. That means they, you can't use against him what you got in that interview. That's the agreement. What you tell us today, what you tell us now here in this police station, we can't use it against you. And everybody signed off on that. So they couldn't use whatever he said. Now, if you're going to go out afterwards and and hop on YouTube and start telling the whole world you took part in a murder, that's on you. So, you know, and that's where he's at now.